This is the Mile High Five podcast with Carl Jensen and Doug Cunnington. We have authentic conversations about the journey to Phi, health, happiness, and some very odd tangents. We interview Phi experts, side hustlers, people on their way to Phi, and those who have reached the other side. Join us every week, and if you want the show notes and links and all that other stuff, head over to milehighfi.com. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to the Mile High Five podcast. I'm Doug Cunnington, and Carl's out. I think he's at the beach or something. He called me with some flimsy excuse, (laughs) so I asked my friend Carla to sit in. How's it going today? It's going great. I'm excited to be here. We are talking inflation today, and just if we're doing anything different, obviously the inflation numbers are high. I think it's over like 9%, um, at least recently, last time that we checked. And um, yeah, we're just going to talk a couple details, pretty informal here. But uh, Carla, for the people that don't know you, can you give a little intro, who you are, what you do, all that? Yeah. So my name is Carla Cash. I live here in Longmont. um, And my husband and I have our own podcast. It's part of the Mile High Five family called Pennies and Popcorn, where we talk about real money lessons from TVs, TV shows and movies that we love, or sometimes don't love, but think are helpful to uh, to learn lessons from. So yeah, we have a lot of fun with that. Cool. And yeah, one thing that's great, you do live pretty close by and you have a flexible schedule. So whenever Carl calls in sick, um, <laughs> and he, he's running out of days of PTO, like he, <laughs> he doesn't have many left, but mm. I'm pretty flexible. But anyway, I could just call you and you're like, hey, let's talk of inflation and you know, the way we're going to cover this is like if we're doing anything different specifically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I I guess just straight up. Yeah. Are you feeling inflation? Do you notice, um, prices going up here and there? I have definitely been noticing it. So, um, since I quit my big law firm job in 2019, um, Robert, my husband went back to work, uh, in 2020 And since then, we've had like much more traditional gender roles than we ever used to, which means that I am doing um, like all of the grocery shopping. So that's something we used to split up fairly evenly. So I'm the one who goes to the grocery store and I'm the one who sees the prices going up and up and up on everything we buy normally from like meat and produce to snacks and I have a pretty serious chocolate eating habit. (laughs) The price of chocolate has gone up quite a lot. Um, So yeah, I have definitely noticed that those things are going up a lot. I was actually recently listening to a a Planet Money podcast um, where they were talking about the divide in gender. So women were much more pessimistic about future inflation and men tended to be more optimistic they drilled down on that data and figured out that it was actually coming from the fact that women were mostly going to the grocery store, like way more so than men were. So they were actually seeing the rise in their grocery bills. Um, So I think that's the main place where I have seen it a lot. I also learned recently that the consumer price index, which is what we typically look at when we're gauging where inflation is, um, does not include groceries, which I thought was crazy. That completely blew my mind. So I think groceries are actually going up even more than that 9% number that that you were mentioning um, because it's just flat, not included in there, which is pretty insane. Right. And then the other big area is gas. And you and I both don't drive too much and you have a, um, well, you don't have to say what you have specifically, but You don't use much gas, right? We do not. So we are big fans of uh, Priuses. We used to own two Priuses. Now we're down to just one car because we don't need two cars. Um, But yeah, our little Prius is a gas sipper, which is great. But the gas prices have gone up a lot. So I was actually noticing, I ran a couple errands today, and I saw gas as low as $3.92 per gallon in town, which is the lowest it's been in a really long time. It got up to almost $5 a gallon there for a while. Um, but honestly, it didn't affect our life at all. So when we fill up our Prius, it's a 10 gallon tank. So at most we're looking at $50 to fill it up if it's completely empty, right? If gas is at $5 a gallon. Um, so like given how few times we do that every month, I mean, most months I would say we maybe fill up like 
it probably averages out to about one and a half times. So we're looking at a difference of maybe like 20, 20 bucks. Sure. To affect, so that it just, it doesn't affect our bottom line that much. So yeah. what about you guys? Are you noticing it in groceries and gas? Yeah. Well, before I go on, I was going to say I have an F-150 and my tank is 22 gallons. And I think I get maybe like 15 miles to the gallon or something. Okay. And I'm sure some people are like, Doug, that is so wasteful. Yeah. But there's Let's this, all look judgily at Doug yeah. right now. <laughs> there's a very high chance that you guys have like a bigger carbon footprint than I do with my truck because you drive more than me. <laughs> very high possibility. I don't know. We don't drive that much. So let's see. Robert commutes to the um, an office in Boulder, which is like 20 minutes from Longmont, once a week. Other than that, it's like just gro- like grocery runs and you know little errands around town here and there. We are about to take a big road trip to a backpacking excursion, um, which is going to be like five hours away. We also d- we go visit family a couple of times a year. We drive. There you go. A lot yeah, yeah. That. <laughs> That's it. Just that one trip. Yeah. But imagine if we had an F one fifty instead of the little tree pre as we like to call him. True. Yeah. And the one the one other thing I'll throw out. And all this doesn't matter. I'm just having fun here. But um, <laughs> if I were to sell the truck and someone else would drive it more, that would potentially be worse for the local environment and gas usage if they drive it a lot more than me, even though I'm not doing it. That's that is I I can't argue with that. I can't do it. That's yeah, it's fair. a pretty flimsy thing, but <laughs> but yeah, I, I really don't drive that much. I was looking, and I mean, I maybe. I mean, it's, it seems too low, but I think maybe I only put like 1,500 miles in the last year or something. Like, Oh, wow. That is quite low. It's very, very low. Yeah. Um, but back to your question. Yes. Definitely notice in the grocery store, I do probably 99.5% of the shopping, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, big, big increases in meat and, yes. you know, beef and, and you know, all, any, any kind of protein. And yeah. I usually shop at uh, Sam's just because it's a little bit closer and I don't get good gas mileage, so I'm not going to drive to the (laughs) Costco that's so far away. And basically, I've noticed salmon go like up and down. Like there's certain, Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not sure like the drivers and you you may see different prices all around town, but yeah, the meat has gone up like a huge, huge amount. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. Meat has gone up by, in my estimation, like 30-ish percent. Yeah. Just a huge jump in the cost of meat. It's a good time to be a vegetarian, which sadly I am not because I lack the willpower. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it uh, meat's very expensive. I think that's definitely the biggest place where I've noticed it. Like other food items have gone up. Like I think we don't, we hardly ever have milk in the house. We've had it recently because it's gone in some recipes that we've made. Um, and I noticed milk has gone up quite a bit too. Mm-hmm. Um, from maybe like we always buy the half gallon, so maybe like a dollar fifty for a half gallon was pretty, or maybe like a dollar eighty, and now it's up to like a little over three. So yeah, that was that was kind of a a shock yeah. when I bought milk for the first time in forever recently. But yeah, I mean all kinds of things like yogurt. Eat a lot of yogurt. That's gone up a lot. Um, any kind of like snacky food items, you know, chips and things have gone up a lot. Um, so yeah. It's the grocery store is the, the place where we are feeling it by far and away the most. Do you know why they don't include that as one of the components of the consumer price index? I think they said something about the fact that it was like just too volatile to give a reliable indicator. So, I mean, I don't know. For us, like food is the main thing that we buy, right? We just buy so little other things. Um, like what else is going into it? I don't know what else they're they're even looking at. But I guess it's things like cars and like, I don't know, things around the house, um, clothes. I mean, what mm-hmm. else is there? I don't yeah. know. But um, yeah, I guess they're looking at those things more than groceries. But I thought that was pretty shocking. And is housing included in the in the index? I assume that it is. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, although I'd be surprised if housing was like anywhere close to 9% around here over the past few years, it's gone up by what, like 30, 40%. Um, so yeah, it's 9% seems way low for that. Yep. 
And then uh, the second part, I have noticed gas prices are higher and I haven't, I don't drive my truck too much, but I did sort of like think, ah, you know what, do I want to take my truck and drive whatever 50 miles to go on a hike? Like that actually like cost a few bucks Mm -hmm. to to do that. Um, Luckily, I've had some other home projects that kept me busy around here. So I was like, "Ah, I'm I'm not going to hike right now, but you know. I did think twice knowing that it's like a few bucks to go drive around and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm probably, maybe everyone's going to hate me for saying this, but I think it's pretty good that gas prices are going up. I wish they'd actually like stay up um, because it's good for people to, you know, cut back on their driving a little bit and be more conservative about how much they're using when it's just flowing like water, which is also something we should conserve. (laughs) Um, It's, you know, people just end up, making frivolous trips and it's not good for planet earth this place we all are kind of fond of living so yeah i'm i'm more in favor of gas prices going up and staying up a little bit i think it'd be better for the environment and it you know really um, increases the motivation for companies to start turning out electric vehicles more quickly so it's a good motivator i think Mm -hmm. And yeah, a couple areas that we didn't have to consider too much housing and cars. Cause we're not, you know, we're not buying new cars. We yeah. have houses that we, you know, when did you buy yours? We bought ours, um, like December, basically new year's Eve of 2019. Okay. Yeah. And we were like a couple months after in, uh, the first quarter of 2020. Yeah. So yeah, man, we dodged a bullet. We have a good friend who's looking at houses right now and, ah, uh, it is it is rough out there. It is yeah. so rough. Yeah. I, I think if we were looking now, we probably would be like, ah, we, we would move like further out or mm-hmm. find a cheaper place probably. It's yeah. very expensive here. Yeah. So, okay. Anything else on the, um, just the higher prices or certain observations or have you changed any, like, you know, with the groceries or anything like that? Yeah, I do think um, with the groceries, it, it's kind of the same mentality as with gas. Like, it's not a bad thing if the chip aisle is suddenly way less <laughs> enticing because you know you're going to be spending like $4.50 to get a bag of Cheetos. I know Cheetos are Carl's favorite example. <laughs> um, so, I again, I don't think that's such an awful thing. It's probably good to have even more motivation besides the fact that they're really awful for you mm-hmm. to steer away from those things a little bit more. What about um, chocolate? You feel the same way about chocolate? I do not <laughs> feel the same way about chocolate. My dark chocolate habit is not going anywhere. So we're just spending more money on that and it is what it is. Did you but, um did you know there was a chocolate fest in Longmont? Did we went to it? Oh, did you? I really we drove by it on a day that we had like a bunch of yard work that we were trying to get done. And it was kind of like late in the day when we drove by it anyway. So we we missed out. But I really wanted to go as yeah. soon as I saw that sign. Yeah. Which Robert also told me that he knew it was happening and specifically chose not to tell me because he thought we would spend all our money at the chocolate festival. So <laughs> next year. You next really year. like chocolate. <laughs> uh, we'll uh, we'll talk to Elizabeth later. So we, um, yeah, we had a nice time. There was good chocolate, good chocolatiers around there. So Breaking my heart, Doug. Yeah. Breaking my heart. <laughs> and yeah, just chocolate y- lovers united. It was, it's it was a stuff. good group. Yeah. So, okay. And you have a note here on I bonds. Can you explain those and talk about it a little bit? Yeah. So, um, these are kind of a, like a product, I guess, that you can purchase from the government where you're basically giving the government your money as a little mini loan and they pay you interest on it. So in the past, these bonds have been not great investments. A lot of people keep bonds um, to kind of like balance out their stock portfolio, right? Because bonds are more reliable. But in the past, they were paying like one to 2%. I mean, it was just very, very piddly, not even enough to keep up with like normal inflation. Um, But now they are being offered at 9.6%, I think, somewhere in that vicinity last time I checked, which may be a little out of date now. Um, But that is a really solid investment to make. So we have not done it yet just because I, so I do think they, they put income limits on it. So I think it's $10,000 per person. So like a married couple could do up to 20. Um, but you know, that's $20,000. You're getting 9.6% a year. 
guaranteed. Yeah, you're looking at like a little over $1,800, right? That's coming to you. So we're not so wealthy that I'll like turn down a free $1,800 if we can just, you know, spend a little time to put our money in there. I do think the flip side of that is that it's a really good time to be putting your money into the stock market. And who knows how high that could go, right? As things eventually start to recover, could be a heck of a lot more than 9.6%. So it's kind of a balancing act of how what your risk tolerance is. And, right. um, but yeah, I think it's definitely a nice thing to have and people should take advantage of it. And I have not looked into this super carefully, but I think there is a way for you um, to like give it to your spouse and then they can give it back to you. And that adds another 20K that you could do as a married couple. I think, I'm not sure, but everyone out there who's smarter than I am should research this yeah. and figure it out. It's not investment advice, it's entertainment. Yeah. So yeah, and we we looked at it a little bit. I think I listened to a podcast, maybe like How to Money or something, and they were talking about it and I was really enthusiastic, told Elizabeth about it. And we're like, yeah, it seems good. And then yeah, we lost interest, like chocolate fest happened. And we're like, <laughs> oh, we, we forget everything we we're talking about. But you you bring up a good point. I've continued to invest um, during the recession and the downturn and mm-hmm. the opportunity costs. There's a strong argument that investing it in an index fund is probably going to have a much bigger return, especially, I mean, July, the market popped back up just a little bit. But mm-hmm. I mean, we're down like, what, 20 five percent earlier this year yeah yeah so So. there's a lot more to be to be gained from the stock market potentially right you never know what's going to happen nobody does anybody who tells you otherwise is lying um but i don't know it's an interesting puzzle that it presents i remember reading um your money or your life like the old school version of it that came out in what it was like the 80s i think and she talked about the fact that Um, Vicki Robin, the author, she was saying like, you know, things are great. You can just put all your money into um, like bonds or I think at that point it was even like CDs that would pay you like eight plus percent. And I just remember thinking, oh, I'm so jealous. I wish that I'd been around at that time and I would have put like all our money into that and we would have gotten guaranteed eight percent return for life. Like some of these things were, you know, like forever things like 30, 40 plus years that you could put your money into these vehicles and get that guaranteed return. And now we sit here and I, I don't think these bonds are that long term. I think they're much shorter than that. Um, but still, as I have the opportunity, I'm kind of thinking, well, I don't know, might we be better off just putting it in the stock market instead? So I don't know. It's tempting, but given the income limits on it, it's not like you're going to put your whole portfolio into there and like that's going to be your golden ticket for the rest of your life. Um, Because I think even if you do this tricky finagling, which may or may not exist that I'm talking about, you'd be up to a max of like 40K, which is is nothing to seize at. That's a lot of money. Um, But it's not going to set you up for life with all of your investments. So, Yeah. And any other thoughts on inflation in general or, you know, I-bonds? I don't know if you had any other fun facts on that. Yeah, I think that's about it. Um, I would just encourage anybody who's got money sitting around in like a, you know, a checking account or like a even a high yield savings account. It's probably not at nine point six percent. So I would definitely go check out those government I bonds and see if you can get a little bit extra in your pocket. Do you know how long the money's locked up? Do you know what the term is? I cannot remember, but I I do think it was fairly short term, like maybe a year or two. Okay, that's that my, sounds right. That's my guess. Yeah, something yeah. sort of short, but and I was gonna say, it, are these sort of the equivalent to like the savings bonds, like when we were kids? Like, are there savings bonds still around? Can you even get those? Gee, I mean, probably. We actually were talking uh, in our Mary Poppins episode that we did recently about uh, what it looks like to just involve invest in a bank and like a savings account. Um, it's not. It's really not great, but. Uh, Savings bonds? I don't know. I guess that's still a thing. It's not something I would recommend to somebody. Um, yeah, these these government I bonds that we're talking about are very much the exception to the rule. Like mm-hmm. across the board, most bond funds are going to be paying you like three ish percent, three to four percent. So this is a 
a unique opportunity, I think, if you've got a little bit of extra cash sitting around to get a good return on it. Cool. All right. Well, if people have thoughts on inflation or any tips, you can uh, shoot us an email or leave a comment over on the YouTube side. Carl, I didn't prep you before, but do you have any um, episodes you want to plug coming up for your show, Pennies and Popcorn? Um, yeah. So the Mary Poppins one we just did was fun. We've also got another one coming out on Sex in the City. It's actually the second episode we've done on Sex in the City because there's just so much to hate on um, from that show. So that'll be coming out next week. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of a- any other shows. favorites from like the last year because yeah. you've been doing the show for a little while now, right? Yeah, I think we just put out our 34th episode, which is pretty wild. Um, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory has a special place in my heart. That one was just a ton of fun to record, and we got a lot of fun things out of that one. Um, and that was the original one, right? The original. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see the second one with Johnny Depp. Is, is it much different, you know? Uh, it's less good in my okay. very not humble opinion. Um, just a lot cornier, but there were some, there were some good things about it. Um, Bridgerton. We did a Bridgerton episode recently, which was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, we've got... We've done everything. It feels like Jaws, okay. Crazy Ex Girlfriend. Awesome. You've got mail. Lots we'll, of things. Lots of things. We will link up to it so people can check out those episodes. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for listening to the show. That was the Mile High Five podcast. And I'm Doug Cunnington, the Balder host. And Carl Jensen is the cool, sexy one. If you dig the show, please do three things for us. Number one, tell a friend, a family member, an enemy about the show. We really don't care who you tell. Maybe forward them a specific show that you know that they will like. It's the single most helpful thing that you can do to spread the word. It's like giving us a virtual high five. And uh, actually, we don't give high fives in, in person. So the virtual kind's pretty good. And more importantly, your friend or family member or even your enemy will appreciate the fact that you were thinking of them. Number two, make sure you're following or subscribed on your podcast app, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Overcast, YouTube, whatever you're using, and that way you won't miss a show. And number three, please leave us a rating and review. We read them on the show occasionally, and you might hear yours out there on an upcoming episode. Quick disclaimer, this show is not financial or legal advice. I'd actually be surprised if it sounded like it. It's really just for entertainment, and that's at least what we're hoping for. But seriously, get advice from professionals. Carl and I are just two guys with microphones that sit in my basement and talk. So we'll catch y'all next week.